Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this video, we're going to be looking at a little bit about how to work with the constraints options in Blender. So what can we do with constraints? Well, here's an example of a test animation that I did quite a long time ago. Uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make this shuttle looking thing and I wanted this these guns to come out. And at first I was just going to have like one laser cannon type thing come out. And then I thought, well, you know, I can just duplicate these and I can make four of them come out all at the same time. That'd be pretty cool. Now, what I could have done with this is I could have modeled the uh, laser cannons or whatever you want to call them. And I could have took the laser cannon and I could have uh, put keyframes on each piece that I was moving. And I could have actually animated that and animated each piece to do exactly what it's doing now but that would have been very time consuming. Using constraints, you can do a lot of these type of things uh, in a more automatic way. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you at least uh, an example of how you can use constraints. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some gears and I'm going to make it so that we, we can rotate the gear and have the other gear rotate along with it without setting all the key points in animation in order to do that. So let's go ahead and model a simple gear. I'm just going to choose Shift A for my Add menu. Choose Mesh, and I'm going to come down here to Cylinder. And I'm going to immediately hit the T key to go into our tools and look at these options here. You should have 32 vertices, and that's fine for what we're doing here. So I'm going to leave that there. The field type is right now it's ingone, so it means it's going to be filled. You can change that to nothing, but I'm going to leave it as ingone because I'm going to use that. So those are OK by default. Choose T to get rid of that menu, and I'm just going to middle mouse button, kind of rotate this view, zoom in with the middle mouse button, and look at what I got here. So I'm making a gear. I don't I don't want it to be this thick, of course. So I'm going to choose S Z to scale along the Z. And let me do that again, S Z, and make it something like that, and choose seven top view. I'm going to tab into the edit mode. Okay, let's go ahead and choose the face view down, down here at the bottom. And I just want to choose this top face. Actually, I had the bottom, and that's okay because I need to do the bottom as well. So I'm just going to go seven top view. And uh, before I do that, let me do a E extrude, click off of that, and S to scale. And it's going to scale that down like so. Maybe not quite that much, maybe right around there. And again, in face view, I want to select this top one. Having a little bit of difficulty selecting it because the 3D manipulator is right there. So we can just come down here, turn that off and select that face. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to choose E extrude, click off of that S to scale it down, go into seven top view and you can kind of see, you know, where they line up. So get them kind of lined up like that. I'm going to choose X to delete this face, select this face, X to delete that face. So now I have a hole in this cylinder here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these together. An easy way to do that is just come down here and select your vertex view. And I'm going to come in here and alt select between two of these vertices. And that will select all around. And shift alt select these vertices here. So you have both of these uh, edge loops selected, choose W, go into my specials menu, and I'm going to use this tool here, it's called Bridge Edge Loops, and that, as you can see, bridges those together quite nicely, so now we have kind of a solid object there. Okay, tab back into edit mode, and I'm going to choose face select down here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select every other face along this area here. So I'm just select, shift selecting these faces. Okay, so I have all those uh, faces selected. So while you have those selected, I'm gonna choose T for the tools menu again. And I'm going to use the extrude tool to extrude individual. So I'm gonna Choose that, and as soon as you do that and start moving, you, you're going to see that you're going to extrude these faces along like, like so. So now we need to scale down each of the tips here. If I was just 
choose scale it would just do the same thing we were just doing so what we need to do is we need to come down here to our pivot point and change it from median point which is the default to individual origins so when you do when you uh, change it to individual origins then you scale it you get something like so and I'm gonna go seven top view kind of see what it looks like and I'm gonna change this back to median point and then from there you can scale it down more if you want to however you want your gear to look so if I tab back into object mode now you can see we have a pretty decent gear here so t seven top view I am going to let's go ahead and name this come up here to your outliner double click on the cylinder name and we'll just call this gear one okay I'm going to choose shift D to duplicate this gear and I'm just going to move it over here like so I'm going to rotate it a little bit and move it into place just so it's, it looks sort of like the cogs are fitting together there so when you turn this gear it looks like it should turn that gear as well so with this gear the second gear selected I'm going to go ahead and just call this gear 2 okay so now we have a basic scene set up basic uh, couple of models here that we can use in order to uh, test our constraints with okay so the idea here is when we rotate this gear uh, say if we just R rotate this we want the second gear to rotate automatically so in order to do that we're going to use constraints and I'm gonna create another object here I'm gonna choose shift a going on into my menu go into the empty menu and there's a number of different empties that you can use but I'm going to use the plane axis empty and just G move that out here where we can see it so by default when you create an empty and you look up here in your outliner it's called empty I'm just going to call this empty underscore let's call it gear rotation and I'm just in the habit of naming these things because you know depending on what you're doing you can come along and create another empty and then you'll get confused on which is which so it's, it's nice to always name your objects there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first gear here I'm going to come over here and you'll see this little chain link looking thing that's your constraints menu and click on that and you can choose add object constraint as soon as you do you see a lot of different uh, constraints here that you can use in order to work with your your models that you're creating and, and do different things here um, some of them are kind of self-explanatory some of them not so much but if you experiment with them you you start seeing which ones do what and, and why but in our case we're gonna do something that is pretty self-explanatory when we look at this what we want to do is for a gear one we want to copy rotation because anytime we rotate our empty we want to uh, we want the gear to change as well so I'm just going to choose copy rotation and as soon as you get that you'll see some of these options here and in this case I want to, I want this gear to copy the rotation of our empty so I'm going to go to target click on this and I'm going to choose empty gear rotation now what rotation do I want it to copy well if I click on this you can see well if I turn my manipulator back on you can see that if I rotate it around the Z that's kind of what we're looking at on the top view so I want to rotate that around the Z so I'm going to select the gear again I don't need to copy the X I don't need to copy the Y I just want to copy the Z for the empty so now when I choose my empty and I R rotate that you can see that it's rotating the gear as well now so far we haven't done anything too spectacular because you could come down here and you could R rotate the gear itself well not right now because it's tied to the empty but uh, we did that before so why you know what good is tying this to, the, to this empty well you'll see now with gear 2 how that works out so I'm going to choose gear 2 and I'm going to do basically the same thing I'm going to add a constraint and I'm going to copy the rotation and again I'm going to use the uh, empty gear rotation and also I don't need to copy the X and I don't need to copy the Y but I do want it to copy the Z but I don't want it I don't want both of these gears rotating the same way so like right now if I do this they go like that so it doesn't make much sense so if I choose gear 2 I can come down here on the Z and I can choose invert so when we come back to our empty and we are rotated look what happens 
Now we've created a gear system and it looks pretty cool. And as you can tell, if you add constraints to these and just use your empty to control them, now when you do your animation, all you have to do is choose your empty, set a keyframe wherever you want it, do R, rotate it, and set another keyframe to wherever you want the rotation to end. So that's a lot easier than taking this gear, set up the animation for that gear, and then also doing the same thing for this gear. Now, as you can imagine, if you had like, uh, say if you're doing like a uh, clockwork, like the interior of a, of a watch or something where it has these gears, and you you know, you don't have just two, two gears, you might have um, a big number of gears, and you may have little gears coming out of, on off of the main gear. So what you can do is you can pretty much run almost a whole watch system with this rotation like this. You can set it up so that it rotates exactly the way, the way you want to. So another nice thing you can do with the constraints is you can limit the movement of something. So for example, on that laser cannon that you, you seen that I did, what I did is I limited the rotation so that when the arm swings out, it only goes so far. I don't want it bending, you know, all the way back into itself. And the same thing can be said for maybe like a robot arm or something. You may only want it to move in a certain direction. And that's definitely true if you do a human model. So like if you were to create a model of a, the human body, you could um, add the armature to it and you could limit the armature, which is basically sort of like mimicking the bones of the human body so that they move in the correct way. In other words, you don't want your leg, you know, going backwards when, when it bends or whatever. So you can use constraints on that as well. So say if we wanted to limit this, I'm just going to choose the empty, add an object constraint directly to this, and I'm going to choose limit rotation. And the only thing I want to limit in this case is the Z. So I'm just going to check Z and the minimum is zero. We'll make the maximum 90. So it only goes 90 degrees. So now when I rotate this, you can see it stops right at the 90 degree point. So that's an, a good easy way to constrain your movement of an object. So that's a very brief introduction to constraints. But as you can see, if you go into this menu, you have all this different stuff that you can play with and look at. Um, like I said, a lot of it, if you look at it, it's kind of self-explanatory, but the ones that aren't, you can kind of look up and see what they do and see if it'd be useful to something that you're doing. And one thing I really like about constraints is you have to actually kind of put some thought into how it's going to work. It's almost sort of like writing a program and, and finding out and testing it to see if it's going to perform right. So like on one spaceship that I created a long time ago, I decided that I wanted the guns that were on it because the guns were going to be uh, hidden inside the wings. What I wanted to happen is I wanted this panel to open up, both sides of the panel slide open. As it's sliding open, the gun actually starts rotating and coming up out of the panel. And it rotates so that the guns are pointed out and it's ready to fire. So when you think about what you want, and you can think about you know anything like that landing gear, uh, anything that moves on your model, when you start thinking about that and how you can do that with constraints, I think it's a lot of fun to try to figure out what it's going to take to make it do what you want to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video on creating a constraint. Please like, subscribe, comment below if you want to, and I'll catch you in the next video.